How are you doing tonight? Welcome to Commercial Break. I'm Rebecca Michael. We are the only show that brings you all your recognizable faces from commercials. You are watching the stream.tv. Mike? Hey, Rebecca. My name is Mike Beatrice. I am manning the chat desk and the internet chatosphere. I'm monitoring your comments live on Twitter, Facebook, and probably not MySpace. Rebecca, who <laughs> are we interviewing today? Well, Mike, this lady loves Lay's potato chips so much that she is willing to risk ruining her nails just to eat the best potato chips in the world. Please welcome actress Colleen Ryan to commercial break. <laughs> welcome Thank here you. tonight, Colleen. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Rebecca. This is fun. I know. It's so much fun. I've been watching you on TV forever. Every time I sit through my shows, you show up, and I'm like, who is this girl? I've got to find her. Like, and I finally found you. And it, How long have you been doing commercials? Well, I've been doing commercials about seven or eight years, close to that. Cool. And it's been a lot of fun. They're always something different. They're, they're short and sweet, and you get to do kind of bizarre things like put your manicure into potato chips, things I like mean, that. I mean, you must love potato <laughs> chips. No, how many times though, you have to tell us, how many times did you have to have your nails done in that audition? Or maybe in the actual shoot? You know, there was a, a big discussion about what color. And I think they started out, we started out with red and they really liked it because you could see it pretty clearly. And it was more about how messy it should look. Oh the, yeah, they had to get the right look. Exactly, yeah. and we, we dipped it then into a cup with like crushed chips and <laughs> how big the crushed part should be, and it, it was interesting. I always love those kind of unusual facets of, of what goes into a commercial. How many times did you have to eat like a mouthful of potato chips? Oh, not as many as the girl who played the receptionist. She, oh this yeah. This was before <laughs> lunch, and I think she ate almost an entire bag of chips and she was like I'm full I can't eat lunch guys <laughs> and I had a few a, a good amount of takes but not anywhere anywhere near I had what maybe she a had small bag a yeah. snack bag <laughs> Mike I know you love potato chips so I'm sure you have a question uh, I do Rebecca <laughs> and for the record I was always like an old school sour cream and onion original Lay's guys oh um, yeah that's <laughs> just and there would never be enough you can't, you can't eat just one uh, our first chat star question comes from uh, Ren Fair Weather fan Colleen uh, in the commercial. Was that a real nail salon or was that just recreated on a soundstage? That was actually a hair salon on oh, wow. Beverly. Yeah, it, it, I guess they go out and they scout these places and that had the lighting and the, the wall quality that they wanted. But they moved things around for sure, but you no, know, it was a hair salon. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, because usually a lot of times it's a set, but it's kind of nice when they shoot in a real place. Yeah, yeah. You were also in a commercial um, calling for Morningstar Veggie Burgers. Mm -hmm. and they make veggie burgers look mouthwatering in this commercial. It's unbelievable. Um, how many times did you have to actually eat a burger? You I would. Know, they do a lot of close-ups of you in this, this I, one. I would bet it was between 25 and 30. It, it's funny because when they prep the burger, there's a food artist and they, they make everything fall out the front of the burger so it looks more appetizing. Yeah. And a lot of the times I would do the take and it was just bread when I was biting it. But then, you know, I would, I'd, other times I'd, I'd get the burger. It, it's, you never know, but definitely, definitely more than the average amount of bites, 25 to 30. So now we know they have these food artists come in on all these burger commercials. That's amazing to me. These, like, these I, people are good. Yeah, they, they, they are really good. are. I wanted to run out and eat one right after that. It worked. Um, Mike, you went vegan, didn't you, at one point? Or was that you? Yes, I did, Rebecca. It was right about the same time I went Scientologist. It was just a yeah. phase. I'm good now. Uh, our uh, chat stars love that commercial. And uh, they do have another question for you, uh, Colleen. Um, you know, these are two food ads back to back. Uh, is there a spit bucket on set? And did you, uh, you know, do you use one as a, when you're just doing these commercials? Oh, yeah. In fact, they like to insist that you use the food bucket because I, I think they don't want you to get sick if, if you have to do an astronomical amount of takes. Oh, yeah. The, the chips and the bread were actually two tough ones because they dissolve very quickly in your mouth and it's hard to kind of spit anything back after, you know, a couple chews, it's basically yeah. gone. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so I, I, 
I ended up eating a good amount of chips, which is fine because I like chips too. Yeah, so. that too, yeah. <laughs> um, I noticed um, that you play a young mom a lot. Um, you, you have a good look for that. Is there something, um, you do a Netflix spot where, where the kids make a fort in the living room and you give the mom look and, and that whole thing. Is there something that you put on when you know you're going out for a spot where it says young mom? Is it like an, an outfit? Is it the way you wear your hair? Is it a persona? What is it that you do for those kind of auditions? I think it's a little of everything. Um, there's definitely, you know, the collared shirt with the button down that I don't even know if young moms wear it, but I think so. So yeah. I guess it, it depends on how it makes me feel. Um, it, it definitely, even, you know, your hair is a little more wholesome and and how you interact with the kids if they're there is a big part of it too so yeah I once had an actress that said that here uh, that said that she sometimes literally will go in with no makeup and her hair all tousled for some mom roles and I, she'll get them it's weird because the times that I have put less effort into it maybe because I was running out of the house I've sometimes booked those and I'm like gosh I wouldn't have worn my hair that way and yeah I, I didn't mean to wear that shirt but maybe I should. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of it too though is what you bring in there as your personality and hopefully yeah I like to think you're so. obviously <laughs> doing something right um, Mike I, how about that one I'm sure you have a question because you Netflix all the time so I do and everybody loves Netflix and everybody loves that spot uh, and everybody loves forts and from now on I'm calling this my chat fort <laughs> going forward. This is the chat for it. Um, our chat question comes from the silver couch surfer. Colleen, what Netflix shows do you binge watch? Ooh, oh, that's good a good one. one. Yeah. Um, Orange is the New Black. That is a great show. House yeah. of Cards. Um, I, gosh, I was even on a Twin Peaks binge a couple weeks ago. I know I'm a little, that was a little huge, behind. You're a little few years <laughs> late, but that was a huge series. It, so. it was, and it's you know it's it's different than series today, yeah. which which was in, is interesting to watch, and the music is very intense. And who killed Laura Palmer? I mean, that was a big <laughs> thing. I was younger when that was on, but yeah. but it definitely uh, it's a good show. I I can't wait though for the next Orange. Uh, it's season. amazing what Netflix, the world it's opened up. Um, <laughs> we can get all these series now. Um, you were also in a Jif Whip spot where you're choosing mom who chooses Jif. Um, and the product is new. And um, in the spot, you're with floating peanut butter. Was that done with a green screen special effect? Or? Most of it, you know, we didn't have green screen behind us. It was, um, most of it was just kind of looking up and imagining it was there. But then there was one, um, one thing where we had to grab the can. And so they had the, the container, the exact container that, the product is in, but it, it was all in that green uh, chroma key, or yeah. I, don't, I don't know, the green, so they could, I guess, do the label around our hand, or, um, and they had a guy on a shelf with a, <laughs> you know, a stick, and the, the thing was and on the It's stick. hanging yeah. over you, and you have to reach for exactly. it. Exactly. And it's amazing to me how they do all that stuff. It's really cool. Sometimes it's not nearly as uh, fancy as you'd think. Think it would but be, it, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, we always like to hear the technical side of things. Mike, uh, please put down the peanut butter. <laughs> Never, make me. <laughs> uh, this is a great question uh, from our chat, uh, chat fan, Midnight Snacker. Uh, Colleen, do you prefer crunchy or creamy? And as a follow-up question, have you ever had a fluffernutter? Who hasn't had a fluffernutter? Come on, those things are so good. They I are so good. I grew up on them. Well, you're Definitely. East Coast, though. I think it's an That's East Coast true. thing because I've talked to people in California and they don't know what it is. What? Yeah. You're kidding me. No, I, I love those. And every now and then I'll be like, I think I need to have a fluffernutter sandwich. But but I like the creamy peanut butter better. I, the, the crunch is a startling texture in, yeah. the, in the peanut butter for me. But I know a lot of people love that too. So. Yeah, I, I like the smoother kind. And just so the audience knows, a fluffernutter is a peanut butter and marshmallow sandwich. Mm -mm. For those of you who don't know, now I really want one. Um, so here's a funny piece of trivia for you. Um, everyone should know this. Um, you were on HBO's series Entourage and you were a stand-in for Adrian Grenier. And actually the whole cast of Entourage had female stand-ins. Explain to the audience what a stand-in does and what this experience was like for you. 
Well, a stand-in um, is someone who goes in and perf not performs, but works through the area that the actor is going to be coming into so that the crew can set up the lights and the camera, mm -hmm. and the actor has it just right for them when they step on. It's time that they don't have to be on set, and they can be prepping or getting makeup, things like that. And I was Adrian's stand-in when I first moved to L.A. This was probably seven years ago. And I got a call uh, from a, a background casting company that asked me what my schedule was like. And I said, well, I'm, I'm pretty flexible. And, and I, I was union at that point, which it is a, a SAG, it's a union job, SAG yeah. after job. And, and uh, I interviewed. They took photos. They did light tests. And uh, I got the job. So you guys could be <laughs> twins in, in real life. I, I don't know about <laughs> twins. Uh, he, he, you know. My brother, he, he could be in the family for sure, and they, they want that for the, the DP to be able to, you know, bounce things off the eyes. The eyes are the most important, I guess, when you're yeah, setting up the lights. Yeah, you have similar eyes, very much so, yeah. Mike, I remember when you were single and you were doing stand-up comedy, you had your own entourage. Yes, not surprisingly, <laughs> I don't remember any of that. <laughs> it's a little, it's very fuzzy. Uh, our, uh, our chat stars are, of course, big fans of Entourage, and Adrian Grenier has been on Twitter a lot this week talking about the, uh, about the Entourage movie, so Sidekick109 wants to know, Colleen, is the movie happening? Do you know, and will you be in it? Um, gosh, I didn't get that memo. Um, <laughs> I'll have to uh, call my sources. No, but I, hey, I'd love to be in it, but um, I'm definitely more in front of the camera these, these days, so... That's really cool, though. It would be great, though, if you could, um, you know, ha go back into that if they shot it. That would be great. Um, so, Mike, oh, actually, no, Colleen, I have one more question for you. You were just in a short film last year called How to Be a Female Director, and you played a female director named Kay. Um, and I saw that in the in the trailer that the producer, it's sort of an old school throwback thing. He's kind of annoyed. He realizes his director's female. Tell us, what is the premise of this film? Like, is there a message to it? Oh, definitely. Um, the director, Trisha Gum, is such a funny, talented girl, and she and I, we met a year prior. I had auditioned for a different short film she was doing um, through AFI, and it came down to me and the other girl, and I didn't get it, and uh, I was bummed because I really liked, I liked what Trish had written, and um, a year later, I get a call from her, and she says, I have thought about your performance and I really wanted to work with you and I wrote this short film for you and it's vintagey and kind of quirky which is what I like to think yeah. of myself and basically it, it's uh, a throwback to the old PSAs of the 50s mm -hmm. those kind of odd stilted narrated stories that were cautionary tales to people in in a certain yeah. way um, and so she did this uh, kind of I guess following her own plight as how difficult it is as a girl to, to be, advance yeah. in mm -hmm. the film industry and and uh, you know Kay starts out as a script supervisor and she aspires to more and uh, it's, it shows in a quirky way how she goes up uh, what happens when she becomes a female director and everybody's response in oh, the cool. 50s. Oh, That's yeah. really neat. And Tr Trisha's name is what again? Trisha Gum. So Google her, guys. I found her website um, the other day and I went through her stuff. She was great. Um, and so now it's time for Jingle Jangle. <laughs> Okay, so people remember jingles sometimes more than they remember their first kiss. And Colleen, what was your favorite jingle? I was thinking about this, and the one I remember the most is from Fruity Pebbles. This is, it's, oh. it's ridiculous because it's kind of obscure, but Barney is a rapper, and it, pardon my rapping, but it goes something like this. <laughs> okay. I'm a master rapper, and I'm here to say I love Fruity Pebbles in a major way. Bedrock, orange, lemon, purple, lavender, and red. But to get the fruity taste, you got to trick Fred. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I love that I one. Like, I looked it up 1992. Oh, my gosh. Why, why has that stuck with me for, I don't know, 20-some years? I feel robbed because my mom wouldn't let me have sugar cereal. Really? <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> Mike, what do you think of that one? That's a good one, huh? Yeah, I remember that one. I was a, I was a junior in college, so we ate fruity, uh, fruity pebbles for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. 
<laughs> That's true. So it was it's a good one app. of the food groups. That was awesome. Okay, so now it's time for selling out, guys. All right, this is my favorite part of the show where we collect five adjectives from you, the chat stars. And then we take those words and we give them to our guest who then sells a mystery product. Rebecca, what is today's mystery product? Mike, today's mystery product is a munchkin pumpkin. What are the words? It's quite seasonal. Um, today's <laughs> words from you to chat stars are fortified, on demand, creamy, crunchy. See what we did there? And baked. And so, Colleen, whenever you're ready, okay. it's all yours. This oddly mini pumpkin is fortified with all your favorite vitamins. You can find him on demand at your local grocery store. You can turn him into a creamy spread for toast, or you can eat him the way he is, completely crunchy. <laughs> he does go well with your favorite baked lays. <laughs> Awesome. That was great. <laughs> you got the job. You Thank got it. Thank you. Thank you. So, Colleen, before you say goodbye to us, what's next for you? What have you been up to lately? Well, um, I actually just got back from a my first trip to Chicago, where I was working on a job there, which you'll see on TV soon. And uh, I really enjoyed it, the Windy City. I loved that, the, the big shiny bean. I got to check out downtown oh, and that's had a lot amazing. of fun. Yeah. yeah, it's a great city. I'm, I'm hoping I'm hoping to get more into sitcoms too because okay. I I've always loved sitcoms and I uh, think that that would be a fun place to work. Why yeah, not? You're definitely. Right? Go to work and laugh every day. It so. would be, and we hope to see you in one really soon. What's your Thank Twitter? You. My Twitter is Colleen on screen at Colleen on screen. So follow her there, guys. Thank <laughs> you, and have a wonderful day.